All right, we have another new camera to review. Uh, this time it is the Sony A6400. And this camera, it really seems like they're marketing it towards kind of like vlogging, YouTube filmmaking, which I love. And so I thought I'd give it a review and see if it is any good for vlogging slash YouTube filmmaking. But that requires us to go outside. Uh, there's been a snowstorm for like the last two days, so should be fun. First test, autofocus. Can it keep up? So far, it seems like it's doing a good job. Yeah. Anybody else ever struggle with jacket zippers? <sighs> All right. Matt. Yes. You want to go for a skate? Absolutely. He's always so excited. <laughs> So the reason why I think that this camera is kind of geared towards vloggers, YouTubers as well, cause it's got a flip LCD. Hey, film this, Matt. The flip LCD screen that kind of like tilts so you can see it. It's not as good as having like a flip LCD screen from the side, but but it's something. Man, it's cold out here already. Oh, but there's a few things that, that I feel like would probably, why are we honking? There's a few things that that would limit this camera from being a, a vlogging camera. One is the lack of image stabilization in body and then the other I would say is that it's not full frame so it kind of feels like it's zoomed in on my face all the time even on a wide 16mm lens right now. But I'm always up for trying new cameras so let's see how the A6400 does for vlogging. gonna warm up by the fire quick. They even have sound effects. All right, so one of my big concerns with this camera is the battery life. We are already down to 67% and we haven't been filming for very long at all. That makes it a little bit difficult for vloggers because, whoa, because vlogging takes a while. Uh, you're filming long days and if battery life isn't super good, then that makes it difficult. And if you're wondering, I'm kind of using like an L bracket thing to mount my mic because otherwise the microphone would be right in front of the flip LCD screen, which is no good, useless. I don't think this one's the best one. I think there could be better ones to make it a little bit smaller profile. Also, it kind of just spins on my Gorillapod right now. In general, I'm just having a lot of issues with the whole Gorillapod setup in this cold weather. Doesn't that just warm you right up? I've been trying to teach Matt every once in a while, we go out for a little break. I've been trying to teach him how to do a good, good old fashioned hockey uh, stop. I guess that's what it's called. Is that a is that hockey stop? Yeah, one, one of these. I guess we could show some of his progress. As you can see, Matt's making some progress. I think. I'm not quite sure. Well, let's just say he's making progress. So far, I think the A6400 has been actually pretty nice to use. Uh, I haven't really had too many issues with it, although we are at 34% battery now. So if you're gonna use this camera, you're gonna need a lot of batteries. Like a lot, a lot. I am kind of bothered by the crop though. I would rather it be a little bit wider so I don't have to hold my hand out like crazy far, I could hold it more comfortably. Uh, that just really makes it so you can vlog a little bit longer without having crazy tired arms. Okay, it's crazy cold out here. I think we're gonna get inside and we can do a few more tests, but oh, Canadian winter, just wrecking me these last couple of days. How's that, Matt? Cold, let's go back. Agreed, I think we're done here. All right, so you've probably heard of this camera already. Sony did a really good job of getting this into the hands of a lot of YouTubers to review. And I think that's because they're trying to market it towards YouTubers, vloggers, because it's a small, a fairly affordable camera, 4K, pretty good autofocus, and then it has this sort of 
flip LCD screen. And this is the first APS-C size sensor camera that I've tried vlogging with. Usually I like full frame because it gives you a little, little bit wider perspective as I'm vlogging and I don't have to have the hand so far away to get kind of more than just a close up of my face. Uh, but here's what I found as I was shooting with this camera. And if you've tried this camera before, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. It's always really nice to have different perspectives on cameras because there's certain things that I look for that you might not be looking for. And then there's certain things that you're looking for that I might miss. All right, so first off, let's talk about this flip LCD screen, sort of flip LCD screen. I was super skeptical before I used this because I've seen different companies try to do, well, uh, Canon has, they've kind of done both the flip up and flip down. So this one flips down. And I've always thought that both of those options are kind of dumb because if it flips down, then your tripod or your Gorillapod or whatever, it's gonna be in the way of the LCD screen so you can't see anything. And then if it flips up like this one, once you put your microphone on here, you can't see the screen anymore. So I've always thought it's kind of stupid. And why, why do they put these little, they're such a pain. I always clip those off right away. So I was really skeptical, but to be honest, I didn't mind the flip up screen as much as I thought. Now I was using this sort of L mount bracket. I'll, I'll show you guys. So I was using this kind of cheap L mount bracket from Amazon. I don't necessarily recommend getting this one, but it allowed me to vlog to see myself as I'm filming and also still have a microphone without it being right in the way of the LCD screen. Now it's not ideal and I almost wish that they would just ship it with some sort of really small, nice uh, metal L bracket. Cause this one kind of just wobbles around. It's too big. It doesn't need to be this big. And then also in order to change batteries or memory cards, you gotta take off this whole thing. So that's a really big pain. But I didn't hate this flip up LCD screen as much as I thought. I, it's definitely not perfect. I still prefer the very angle flip LCD screen a lot more, but it's not bad. Uh, one thing I feel like Sony could have also done is just instead of having the hot shoe on the top, why not just put it on the side? I, I feel like sometimes camera companies just do the same thing over and over again without really thinking about, oh, could there be a better way of doing it? And when I was thinking about it, there aren't that many drawbacks to having the hot shoe on the side instead of on the top. In this case, I would, I would much rather prefer that actually for this camera. But overall, I would give this flip LCD screen a thumbs up. It's not perfect, but it's decent. The camera is a nice small size. Now again, with this L bracket and microphone, it gets a little bit bigger. That's just the nature of things. But I also found that the button layouts are pretty nice on here, even though it is a really small camera. I didn't feel like I was pressing buttons all the time. Um, with the maybe exception of this record button being so small on the side, that's a bit of a pain. But overall, I like how small this camera is. And image wise, which is always the most important thing for me, not too much to complain about here. The 4K was looking really great on this camera. 120 frames per second looked really nice. Not too many issues there. A little bit of more and aliasing, but not that big of a deal. Um, it is only 100 megabits per second, I believe, even in 120 frames per second, whereas something like the Fujifilm X-T3 could do 200 megabits per second. So that's a lot more data, which means you're gonna get a better image. But Overall, I would say the 120p is really nice out of this camera. If you really need or want 120 frames per second, here's another great option to think about. Also, the skin tones I found to be pretty nice. There are times where they're a little bit too green or magenta, but um, just using HSL, changing the orange hue and the red hue a little bit, um, the image looked great. Also love that they included S-Log2 and even S-Log3, I believe, but I, do, I only use S-Log2. I feel like S-Log3 is a little bit too much for an 8-bit codec like this, but having that extra dynamic range on these Sony cameras is really nice. I'd say Sony has probably one of the best log profiles. Um, no big macro blocking issues like I've seen on the GH5 with the V-Log and even on the X-T30 that I just reviewed um, in F-Log. This one works really nicely. Again, I do prefer full frame more, but you can actually make this full frame with a speed booster. This one's the Metabones one that I just talked about in the last video. Um, so with this, it was pretty close to full frame, not quite the same. And when I was comparing it with the Sony a7 III, um, the image looked 
pretty similar, very similar. Now there was a little bit more detail in the Sony a7 III, so it's not quite the same. And then also I was testing out the autofocus and I found it to be hunting a lot. So if you need autofocus vlogger, uh, I probably wouldn't use one of these, but if you're filming other people, um, this is a great tool to have, especially if you have a ton of Canon glass, um, just get one of these Metabone speed boosters. Speaking of autofocus, it was pretty decent on the A6400. I didn't have any issues. And I find that Sony's autofocus is great when the conditions are really ideal. And in this case, the conditions were pretty ideal. There weren't any really tough conditions to test it on. So I didn't have any issues, uh, no issues vlogging with it. It kept focused perfectly fine. Then we have the gripes and this one is probably one of the biggest, if I can just get this L bracket off. These batteries are just not very good. Just filming for an hour, the battery was only at 30%. So these run out really quickly. Even when I was just trying to figure out settings and just set the camera up, I had just in like a, a couple minutes, I had gone from 90% to 82%. So these batteries just aren't great. You're gonna need a ton of them, especially if you're vlogging. So that's a really big downside. I really wish they would have just put in the new Sony batteries, um, but maybe it's a size issue or whatever. And then the second, and probably the biggest gripe is the no IBIS, especially if you're trying to vlog and you're walking around a lot. I found it to be really kind of wonky at times. The lack of IBIS mixed with rolling shutter, it was just going all over the place. So that's that's a, that's a probably the biggest downside, I would say, of the Sony a6400 is not having IBIS. And I again, I assume that it's something to do with either the camera overheating or it just uses too much battery power and that's why they didn't put IBIS. But I think for a vlogging camera, you really do need IBIS. So this is probably the biggest downside of the Sony a6400, especially if you're wanting to vlog with it. Okay, so everybody knows this camera does not have built-in image stabilization in the body, um, but uh, is it enough to just use a stabilized lens? So right now, um, I have the image stabilizer on this lens. It's the 18 to 135. 3.5 to f.56 and it's got optical stabilizer uh, steady shot I think they're calling it in here uh, right now it is off um, so is it is it really shaky this is no image stabilizer at all um, and then let's test with it on okay now it's on um, is it smoother now are you getting a lot of those micro jitters if I'm moving around um, do you still need in body stabilizer I don't know let's check it out so is this camera let me get this set up again. Is this Sony a6400 the vlogging camera they're claiming it to be? Yes and no. It works, it's not bad, it's definitely a great starter camera. For the price, it's fairly affordable, so you really can't be complaining too much. Um, but the lack of IBIS and the crappy batteries uh, are the big drawbacks, especially if you're planning on vlogging. Now, is this camera good for other types of filmmaking? Yeah, I could definitely see this being a great camera if you're starting out in weddings or little corporate or commercial videos, um, or a B camera, even if you have something like the Sony a7 III, this would be a great B camera if you can't afford another Sony a7 III. Um, get something like this and it's gonna be a really nice B camera for weddings or corporate or little commercial videos. It's gonna match really well with the color science and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, it's a great camera. Any type of filmmaking where you're usually using something like a monopod or a gimbal or stabilizer, um, that's where this camera would be great because of the lack of IBIS. Again, great camera if you're starting out or you need a cheap small B camera. I would probably recommend this camera. If you are looking in this price range, I would definitely also recommend checking out the Fujifilm X-T3. But if you already have Sony's, I would probably just go with this one. All right, so that's my two cents on the Sony a6400. I'd love to know what you guys think about it, especially if you tested it out. So yeah, comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, and I'm excited to see what other cameras come out this year. See you guys.